What's up everybody? Welcome back to another one of my tier ranking videos. This is where I take an artist that I really like and I break down every single one of their albums and I put it through the S tier all the way down to the D tier. Uh, S is satisfactory, the best top level that you can get. A is good, B is pretty decent, C is eh, D is bad. Uh, an artist that I really liked for a long time that uh, a lot of people may not realize, I mean, if it's not obvious from the title and the shirt that I'm wearing, is Weird Al. Uh, he was one of the first concerts that I ever saw growing up. Um, I, Because of his music, I got exposed to a lot of the bands that I came to like that became some of my favorite bands, like the Smashing Pumpkins and... Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers because I would hear the parodies and they were kid friendly. So uh, my parents allowed me to listen to Weird Al, but I would hear the songs he was parodying and I thought that they sounded really cool. So I wanted to hear the original version. And then the original version ended up being that much cooler than the parody, even though the parodies are still hilarious. Weird Al has uh, kind of had an unprecedented career in the music industry as far as like a comedian or an entertainer. Um, the dude has been around since the early 80s putting out his uh, comedy records and he's been so consistent and such a uh, just snapshot of whatever cultural times that we were living in at any given year that it's really almost like a, a, a living time capsule to go through his albums and see how the sounds evolved and how just everything, image, just how everything evolved. So um, we're going to start off here with uh, his first album, uh, his debut album, which was just self-titled. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of charm behind that album. And I like I like the crappy production style like the the meager uh instrumentation a uh, heavy use of the accordion i'm gonna i'm gonna put that in the b tier i think he came out with a really solid first album release with um songs like ricky which was a uh parody of the song mickey by tony basil um you know he's talking about lucy i love lucy uh this this will be one of many songs where he talks about TV shows, that's like a big theme in Weird Al's music, along with uh, food. Um, but then, you know, there's also some dumb songs on this album, just like there are dumb songs on every Weird Al album. Like, I got a boogie on my finger and I can't shake it off, which, funny enough, is one of his few totally original pieces, and it's uh, not not very good. Um, you got I Love Rocky Road, a parody of I Love Rock and Roll, um, it's it's like the the songs are so ridiculous that you just kind of have to laugh that like man you you really took a song like I love rock and roll and you changed it to I love a flavor of ice cream which is part of the brilliance of uh the stupidity of Weird Al but there's a subversive genius in there as well um so the big song off of this album for him, the song that kind of got him on the map, was Another One Rides the Bus, which he did on The, the Tomorrow Show. Ho I forget the host's name, but uh, when he was on that show, he just played the parody of Queen's Another One Bites the Dust with only a, an accordion and uh, John Bermuda Shorts uh, playing a suitcase for the percussive sounds. And uh, the video's up on YouTube. It's, it's really crazy to, to see. And when you watch this guy, I mean, he, he looks like he's on coke or something, but he's, he's actually very anti-drug and anti-drinking. But he just had this energy and charisma about him that made him compelling to people because that's uh, when he got the record deal shortly thereafter. And then probably like one of my favorite songs off this album is Mr. Frump and the Iron Lung, which talks about his friend who is in an iron lung and his only response to any of Weird Al's questions is uh, just the sound of the iron lung. Very creepy, uh, but very much in keeping with the comedic style of uh, Weird Al. There's always a little bit of sick, twisted uh, kind of nature behind any of his uh, jokes. So anyway, we get to his next album in 3D, and uh, I'll put that in the... By virtue of Eat It and how brilliant that song and video was, I'm going to put that in the A tier in 3D. Um was kind of like when it was his first taste of like real big success because I mean like I said there there have been guys who had done parody songs in the past but I mean when Weird Al did that song which was you know 
the Michael Jackson video for Beat It had come out, you know, earlier uh, that year or the year before. And to be able to get the exact same scenery from the music video that Michael Jackson used in his video, the same outfits, the there was so much production in it. I mean, it looked like the budget for the Eat It video was the same as the Michael Jackson video, who Michael Jackson was arguably just uh, hands down the bigger artist at that time and how always has been. But anyway, like the fact that he went that hard into doing a parody of that song and it's about such a silly subject matter, it just kind of blew people's minds at the time. So uh, that in 3D belongs in Weird Al's A tier just for that alone. Um, then you got the Brady Bunch, which was a parody of the Safety Dance. Again, another show about TV. Um, you had uh, I Lost on Jeopardy, which I thought is one of Weird Al's more stronger parodies. Um, I don't know why I think that, but because, um, you know, it, you, you got to be like so a part of the times that these albums were around to even get some of the references. Kids might not, these days might not even know what Jeopardy is, even though the show's still on TV. Um, I just think it was a funny song. Uh, he he took on a lot of different song stylings of uh, artists that were popular at the time and artists that I think he personally liked. Like he did a style a song in the style of the B fifty twos, and then a uh, King of Suede, which is a parody of King of Pain by the Police or whatever. Um, so anyway, probably won't go on too long about these albums or I'll be here all day. But um, so anyway. Moving on to uh, his next album, Dare to be Stupid. Um, I think, let me refresh my memory of the songs on there. Um, yeah, I really feel like that that album was a, a definite like evolution as well. Um, I'll probably put that in the A tier as well. I almost want to put it in the S tier. If there was a category between S and A, I would put it there. But I just have to save the S tier for some of the albums that are coming up. His big breakout on Dare to be Stupid was like a surgeon, which uh, according to Weird Al, Madonna yelled it to him across the street in New York. She's like, when are you going to do like a surgeon? So it was actually Madonna who suggested that he do that song and do that parody. Um, and they did, you know, went all out on the music video for that. And, and his music videos were... Much like nowadays with viral videos and videos that get popular on TikTok, his videos were just as important to his um, image and his success than his songs were because uh, the videos really were like half of it. Um, the songs did, did stand on their own, but you really did need to see the video too to get the full effect of some of these parodies. Um, I Want a New Duck, which is a parody of I Want a New Drug. I always thought that song was pretty weak. I uh, thought it was like he, he went a little too far into the wacky, wackadoo kind of goofy shit. And I didn't, I always thought that song was stupid. Um, Dare to be Stupid, the title track. Uh, I always loved that song, especially as a kid. Um, it's, it's a pastiche of a Devo song. Weird Al has like kind of three different ways he does songs. He's got. His straight up parodies, which are just obvious parodies of the real song. He's got what he likes to call pastiches, which are not a direct parody of any specific song, but it's more of a um, caricatur caricaturization of a band's sound. Like he'll he did a pastiche of a, a obvious pastiche of a Nine Inch Nails on a later album, and it wasn't. A specific song but it was like a bunch of different songs mashed together to kind of make a similar sound and then his third type of song is an original song that he just wrote on his own he's doing less and less of those nowadays but in the earlier days he had a lot more kind of original stuff that he would do uh, he had Yoda on this album which um, you know Star Wars is another theme that he tackles every now and then in his catalog um, and see if there's anything else notable on here. Uh, he had his uh, Hooked on Polkas, which is um, his polka medleys. Th this will become a reoccurring theme throughout every single one of his next albums, where he's basically just taking popular songs of the day and doing a polka of them and mashing them all up together. A very creative, cool idea. 
and uh, the polkas that he did in the 80s sound exactly like the ones that he did on his latest album in 2014. The style does not change. It is a, like, traditional German polka, uh, but with these modern songs of of that time. And it's crazy to go back to these 80s polkas and listen to them compared to the songs now and just how much the culture has changed musically. Moving on to uh, the third album here, uh, Polka Party. This was actually kind of a a low point in Weird Al's career. It didn't really chart that well for him. Uh, And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this album. I'm going to put Polka Party in the C tier. Uh, Living with a Hernia was the big uh, single, I guess, the big push off of this album, which was a cover of James Brown's uh, Living in America, which I want to say coincided with the Rocky movies, so maybe he was trying to like ride on that wave. But uh, I, I thought it was uh, kind of very much a weaker parody for Weird Al. Uh, I do think it was funny, though, when he starts going into the various kinds of uh, hernias that you can have in the bridge of the song, and he explains like what they are, and um, that was that was pretty interesting. Then the next song is Dog Eat Dog, which is a clear stylistic uh, kind of parody of the talking heads. It's interesting to hear him um, do a a, a David Byrne impression that is actually halfway decent. Um, Addicted to Spuds, uh, again, another parody of Addicted to Love by Robert Palmer. Um, and the song's about his love for all things potato. Again, it's a food-related song, and it is uh, kind of dumb. Uh, not not one of those ones that I uh, go back to and, and check out very often. Um, then he's got another polka medley, which has songs such as a Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel, Sue Studio by Phil Collins. Again, two Genesis guys. Funny that he put them right to, next together. And because they were both doing their solo stuff at that time, um, you know, NXS, Bananarama, Janet Jackson, uh, these were artists that were popular at that time. How we will see how that changes later on. Um, and then Christmas at Ground Zero, I think, is the only um, notable song off of this album that really stood the test of time that people still enjoy. Um, it's just a funny song about celebrating Christmas after a nuclear holocaust. So, yeah, there you go. So then in uh, 1988, we get Weird Al's Even Worse. I will put this in the B tier. Uh, he's doing another Michael Jackson song. I think he saw that uh, Polka Party didn't do so well. So he saw Michael Jackson had a new song out with Bad. So... Um, Michael Jackson does, or Weird Al does a song called Fat. And once again, same exact set that Michael Jackson used. Music video is brilliant. Probably one of my favorite music videos that he's ever done parody-wise of another artist. Um, Just a really good song. It it makes up for how bad the rest of the album is because um, there's not a whole lot of great stuff on here uh, that, that really sticks out to me. Uh, you have Stuck in the Closet with Vanna White, which is one of his originals, which is a just kind of a, a silly song about um, Wheel of Fortune. Um, and anyway, um, this song is just six words long, which is a parody of uh, Got My Mind Set on You by George Harrison. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a dated song. People probably don't even remember Got My Mind Set on You by George Harrison. So it's like a super dated parody that no one nowadays would understand. Um, you, oh, it's the song You Make Me is apparently a stylistic parody of Oingo Boingo. Did not realize that. Uh, I think I'm a clone now instead of I think I'm alone now by Tiffany. I mean, it's it's kind of got some uh, witty songwriting in there about being cloned and all that, but it's it's one of his weaker parodies. Um, he's got Lasagna, which is a parody of La Bamba, and it's more of an Italian uh, send up uh, instead of like you know La Bamba being all sung in Spanish. This song's talking about you know Italian food and referencing all things Italian. It's it's okay. Yet another food-based parody. I don't know why he loves talking about food, especially someone who's been vegan his almost entire life does talk about meat and 
stuff like that a lot in his food songs. Um, Alimony is a parody of Money Money by Billy Idol. Uh, he does attempt a, a stylistic parody of uh, The Police with the song Velvet Elvis, and he does kind of, you know, capture that very police tone. It, it's, it's crazy how much of a chameleon Weird Al can become when he needs to, and he can really kind of encompass these sounds in the studio. I, I never understood how he got so close to a lot of the tones and sounds of these artists, especially in his later albums. I mean, it's like the instrumentation sounds nearly identical to the real version of the song. I can tell this video is going to be really long with the pace I'm going. Up next, we got UHF. Um, this this album definitely had some... This is a soundtrack to his movie that has become a cult classic now, but bombed completely at the time. Uh, this album is a mixed bag for sure. It's got some pretty uh, good songs on there like uh, Money for Nothing, the Beverly Hillbillies theme. That's a very strong parody that I think a lot of the fans like by Weird Al. Uh, it's taking the Beverly Hillbillies theme and putting the lyrics to the song Money for Nothing by um, Dire Straits. Uh, it has some kind of skits on the album that were seen in the movie, like Gandhi 2, which is probably one of my favorite uh, UHF uh, skits. And it's got some really dumb songs like Attack of the Radioactive Hamster from, from a Plant Near Mars, Isle Thing, uh, which is a parody of Wild Thing by Tone Loke. Uh, it's probably one of Weird Al's like, worst parodies, in my opinion. Uh, it's a, about watching Gilligan's Island with a love interest. Uh, his polka song on this album is literally just a bunch of Rolling Stones songs. I don't know why he made that choice, but whatever. UHF is probably one of Weird Al's best original songs that he's ever made. That guitar riff is really cool. Um, what else we got on here? Um, nothing else really except Biggest Ball of Twine in Minnesota, which is uh, hilarious lyrically. It's absurdist. It's uh, right up uh, Weird Al's alley. It's him at his best. It's him in his wheelhouse doing his thing. Um and he still plays this song live. In fact, when I saw his No Strings Attached tour or Strings Attached or whatever it was called a few years ago, they opened with that song and they had these hilarious visuals in the background. Um, with all that being said, I'll go ahead and put this album in the C tier. Um, definitely not one of his strongest albums that he's done. Up next, we get um, Off the Deep End, which was came out in 1992. So you have to figure... Um, uh, Nirvana's Nevermind came out in 91, which uh, is why we get the album cover of him uh, parodying the baby chasing the dollar bill. I will say his album covers, uh, and I forgot to bring this up, but um, his album Even Worse, uh, I think, was kind of a genius album cover and, and album title in and of itself because Michael Jackson had released his album Bad. And so, like, the more bad term of the word bad is even worse um it's bad even worse worse i don't know something like that like good better best anyway so i thought that was a really clever thing and so now he's parroting the album cover of uh never mind which again these things were done but not on the level uh, and commercial success level that Weird Al was doing it so it was it was very novel at the time even though i feel like it's become less novel nowadays um, I really like this album. It definitely is uh, feels like a '90s album. It, it a lot of the '80s cheese sounds um, are gone in favor of more kind of guitar driven stuff, and um, there's also more hip hop influence because hip hop had gained ground by 1992. Um, a lot of the sounds that Weird Al had to work with in the 80s uh, were very cheesy sounding, but hey, the pop songs were cheesy sounding. The synthesizers that the top 40 artists were using were cheesy sounding. So it makes sense that, you know, he could only work with what was going on at the time. So uh, a huge song for Weird Al is Smells Like Nirvana, which is a, a parody of Smells Like Teen Spirit. And, um,. Weird Al actually was able to get in touch with um, Dave or uh, Kurt Cobain because they were it was when they were on the set of Saturday Night Live and uh, Cobain gave him his blessing 
And um, e even in Kurt Cobain's journal that was kind of disgustingly published, I think sometime in the 2000s, early 2000s, um, there's uh, one part in the journal where uh, Cobain calls Weird Al a modern day genius or something like that. So Kurt, you know, if, if Nirvana wasn't already likable enough, you know, Kurt Cobain could definitely um, take a joke, which uh, is is a notable trait. Honorable trait, I should say. Sorry, I'm looking at what the what time I'm at here, trying to not make this video an hour long. Um, you also have uh, Can't Watch This, which was a send-up of the You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer, which was really big at the time. I mean, he's basically taking songs that were viral and doing a parody of them it's ex it's the same exact formula of if you want to get successful on say TikTok or YouTube to this very day you take something that everyone's talking about and then you do some kind of uh variation on it so now their eyes are on you and paying attention to what you're doing and so uh I think in the 80s uh if you look at who Weird Al was doing these pastiches of they were more kind of avant-garde bands like Oingo Boingo and The Police and the B-52s. I think this is music Weird Al actually likes. I think as time went on, he was um, having to cover and, and parody bands that he didn't really want to do, but he knew it would be like a funny idea and, and, and the song would be successful. Um, let's see here. His uh, Polka Medley in 92, you got... Uh, Suzanne Vega now, you got R.E.M., you got uh, Metallica, uh, Vanilla Ice, Motley Crue. So you still had some 80s leftovers uh, that were making their way, kind of like dying off. And by the next album, they're pretty much going to be extinct. Another classic Weird Al fan favorite off this album is You Don't Love Me Anymore, um, which... The video for it is kind of a parody of Extremes More Than Words, but the song itself is actually an original, uh, Weird Al original. And it's, um, yeah, it's really good. Uh, and not to mention hilarious. So that, that was definitely a fan favorite. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put off the deep end probably in the A tier. Don't worry, stuff's getting to the S tier soon enough. <clears throat> Up next, we have uh, 1993's Alapalooza. This uh, this album was uh, really good. I remember this was one of like the second album I bought by Weird Al. This goes in the S tier for me for sure. Um, this was uh, off the heels of the smash hit Jurassic Park, so you know the album cover is uh, you know a send up of the Jurassic Park logo. The first song is called Jurassic Park which is a send-up of the MacArthur Park song by Richard Harris, but I genuinely like this song. Um, I think Donna Summer did a cover of MacArthur Park as well, and it was uh, more of the disco version, and that's kind of the flavor that Weird Al took with it, but made it yet even more different. And Weird Al's version is my favorite version of MacArthur Park, but just with different lyrics. Um, I truly just genuinely like that song. Um, you got the Bedrock Anthem, which has um, become a fan favorite amongst Weird Al fans. Uh, the music video completely mimicked the set of the Red Hot Chili Peppers video for Give It Away, and they're just dressed up like characters from the Flintstones, which I thought was brilliant. The writing and the thought going into, you know, parodying these songs was getting a lot smarter. You had Living in the Fridge, which was a parody of uh, Aerosmith's Living on the Edge. Uh, yet again, another food song, but it's just like this very dramatic sounding song, but he's singing about like food that's like rotting in his fridge, which is so uh, absurd that it's just that, that kind of absurdist humor that I really do love. Um, and then, oh my goodness, you have Bohemian Polka. That is the polka that is done on this album, and it's just... Literally a polka version of Bohemian Rhapsody, which is like sped up 20 or 30 BPMs, and it's Weird Al doing his best Freddie Mercury uh, impression, and it's just brilliant. Uh, this is a really good album. If you want to get into with listening to Weird Al, you could start with this one. Or the next one, which is also S-tier, Bad Hair Day. I believe this might have been the first Weird Al album to have gone platinum. He might have had another one before that, but I know for sure that this album did go platinum. 
Yeah, it went double platinum. This album for a comedy record to fucking go double platinum. Amish Paradise. That was the biggest song, and that remains to be one of Weird Al's biggest songs to this day. Uh, it was a, a parody of Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise. I can arguably say that I think Amish Paradise is more of a beloved tune than Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio. Uh, just his ta- his his send up of the Amish people in rap form and how basic their life is and the music video oh my god the music video goes hand in hand with the song you have to see the video it's brilliant uh this was just the evolution and probably more of a budget to work with it was just weird out at, at his top uh and then i mean the almost every single out like song off this album is just really witty the parody like levels to these songs are much higher evolved and uh, everything you know is wrong which is a style parody of they might be giants is a great song cavity search which is uh, a parody of hold me kiss me kill me throw me by you two which is great calling in sick which is just a parody of all grunge music at the time because grunge was very much uh actually grunge was pretty much dead by uh the time this album came out in 96 uh, but you know, Weird Al is never like right on top of the ball, or at least back in the day he wasn't. Now he's a little bit more with it. With the as soon as something comes out, he'll well, actually that's not true. He hasn't released any new parodies in quite a while. But anyway, there was a point where he got to where he was pretty darn on top of like when the so- original song would come out, his parody would come out soon thereafter. Um, then the polka now shows you the musical landscape of where we were in the 80s to where we're at now. Now we have songs like Stone Temple Pilots in his polka medley, Sheryl Crow, Nine Inch Nails, R.E.M., Smashing Pumpkins, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Green Day, Soundgarden, all of my favorite bands. This is my favorite time for music. And um, I think for this reason, this is probably my favorite Weird Al album of all time. Since You've Been Gone was a really cool uh, acapella song. Gump is another fan favorite um syndicated incorporated by it was a parody of misery by soul asylum um yeah and then you have the night santa went crazy which is another hilariously sadistic uh christmas song that weird al did um so yeah i mean that's just that's such a good album and uh the sales of that uh show that you know up next we have another one just hitting them right out of the park uh 1999's running with scissors uh, I remember uh, we were my family was such big Weird Al fans at the time that we actually bought this album on cassette. That I think it was the day or so it came out. Episode one, Star Wars had just come out, so for Weird Al to like basically do this song where he's taking American Pie by Don McLean and stripping out the lyrics and making them all basically, he's telling you the plot of Star Wars Episode One. Uh, in a very like poetic and rhymy way and and just i don't know it was a brilliant juxtaposition of uh these two concepts and the video yet again was great everyone was dressed in full star wars uh garb and it was uh just just a brilliant song then you had uh my baby's in love with eddie vetter which was a kind of a wackier song but you got to appreciate the zydeco uh genre that he decided to take on zydeco is like that cajun kind of uh accordion stop driven music uh just shows weird al's versatility like that was just hearing that as a kid i, I hadn't really heard zydeco music like that so that i mean he kind of opened me up to it Pretty Fly for a Rabbi, hilarious parody of Pretty Fly for a White Guy, uh, just talks about basically being a a rabbi and and, uh, throws out a lot of Jewish terminology that's that's very hilarious. He throws in the Weird Al show theme, which uh, he had his own show for a while that I actually have never gotten around to see. I should probably buy that DVD box set and check that out, but uh, any true Weird Al fan knows this song by heart. I've done a Weird Al video in the past where I cover his top 10 best original songs, and um, this, I think, is, came in at number one. Um, yeah, anyway, I, if I keep going into every single one of these songs, this video is going to take all day, but another legendary song off of this album is Albuquerque, which is um, it comes in at 11 minutes and 22 seconds. This is, this is a beloved fan staple. Um, I thought it was an original, and much to my chagrin, it is a 
pastiche. It is a style parody of a band called The Rug Burns. And it was like their song was called Joe's Garage, which is basically like beat for beat musically the same as Albuquerque, which was kind of a bummer because I thought that was a Weird Al original. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. So then for a while, like, you know, Weird Al didn't put out anything for what felt like years. Um, And I myself had kind of like, you know, grown up like when, you know, from 1999 to 2003, when Poodle Hat came out, like I went from being like 11 years old to now all of a sudden I'm 14 and, you know, or no, 15, something like that. Yeah, that's right. I can't do math. Uh, yeah, I grew up a lot in that period. Uh, things that I liked when I was 11 now became lame when I'm 15. And I, that's kind of how I view, started to view Weird Al in, that, in my teenaged angst. I was like, yeah, Weird Al's lame, man, whatever, you know, I'm not, not into him anymore. So I got, you know, Mr. Too Cool for school over there with, uh, you know, Poodle Hat. But not to mention, like, I felt like that song in and of itself or that album in and of itself was a fairly weak release. Um, I'm going to put Poodle Hat in the C tier. Um, I just didn't think he had very strong songs on there. Um, and, and it probably also doesn't hurt that, like, the musical landscape was changing from alternative rock to, like, you know, pop punk and more hip hop oriented. And, like, Eminem was blowing up at this point, And he had, like, Avril Lavigne and, you know boy bands which you know were already kind of a thing but they had really like hit their peak at that time and um you know the lead single off this album couch potato which was a parody of eminem's lose yourself i mean just like all the wittiness and and smart kind of humor that made it into his last two albums was kind of lost on this song i mean the concept of the parody is like what if you had the chance to sit down and watch as much tv as you wanted to and it was just like what like really that's that's the concept behind this parody like that was i just thought it was stupid um just uh, as I'm looking at it, there's not really anything on here that, um, I like the song, Why Does This Always Happen to Me, uh, is basically, like, all this melodramatic stuff happens to him compared to, like, this, these awful things that happen to other people, kind of like first world problems he's, like, complaining about, which is funny, um, Bob is a good song, uh, is just parroting Bob Dylan's lyrics and how whacked out they are, and everything is a palindrome, you'd have to watch the music video to get it, um, then you have Hardware Store, and I've already done a, like I said, in my weird top 10 original Weird Al songs video I did. This song is so vocally impressive, and it's like a tour de force. Like, I just, I'll insert the clip right here so you can hear what I'm talking about. They got Allen wrenches, dribble feeders, toilet seats, electric heaters, trash compactors, juices, tractors, shower rods, and water meters, walkie talkies, copper wire, safety goggles, radial tires, BB pellets, rubber mallets, fans, and dehumidifiers, picture hangers, paper cutters, waffle irons, window shutters, paint removers, window louvers, masking tape, and plastic gutters, kitchen faucets, folding tables, weather stripping, jumper cables, hooks and tackle, grout and spackle, power flockers, spoons and ladles, pesticides for fumigation, high performance lubrication, metal roofing, waterproofing, multi purpose insulation, air compressors, brass connectors, wrecking chisels, smoke detectors, higher gauges, hands cages, thermostats, and bug deflectors. If that doesn't show you how fucking talented Weird Al is as an artist, as a musician, as a vocalist, then I don't know what, what it's going to take. So, I mean, you know what? I'm moving Poodle Hat into the B tier. There's, there's, there's some better stuff on here that I forgot about. Apologize to you for that. Up next, we have Straight Outta Linwood. That goes into the S tier. Yes, he had a slight slump, but now he's back. Uh, White and Nerdy, the leading single off of this one. Again, going back to the really witty, funny concepts uh, about being, you know, this nerdy white guy. And yet again, the music video goes hand in hand with the song, although you can still enjoy the uh, stuff that he's saying in the actual song if you don't see the video. Um, I mean, just dropping all the nerd references from like, you know, Klingon, speaking Klingon, knowing JavaScript, uh, collecting comics, wearing pen protectors. In the video, he's meeting this dude in a back alley and he gives him money and he gives him this brown bag. And in the brown bag is the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> it's just great. It's, it's brilliant. Um, you had Canadian Idiot, which was a parody of American Idiot. Uh, it's almost as though um, 
The success of his parodies depends on how good the original song was and how successful it was and how good of the idea of the parody is that Weird Al, Weird Al has. Because sometimes he's covering a popular song, but his parody idea is stupid, like uh, Living with a Hernia or Couch Potato. Uh, but then you have songs like Amish Paradise and Pretty Fly for a Rabbi or White and Nerdy, which are really funny premises is premises premisei for a song parody and then when you match it up with an already good song that's i think when you have a recipe for success there um and now we see how far we've gone down the wormhole with the um polka that he does on this one we have bands like black eyed peas franz ferdinand weezer coldplay uh buster rhymes the killers um so you can see how the musical landscape has changed so much from where he started out. Uh, Confessions Part 3, hilarious. Trapped in the drive through which is a set of R. Kelly's Trapped in the Closet. Uh, just g- great album, Virus Alert, um, which I, I, I thought this was an original, but unfortunately it is a stylistic parody. But this song is fantastic. This whole album is probably my second favorite album after uh, Bad Hair Day. It's just, he really knocked it out of the park with that one, and I was happy to see his success. Up next, we have Alpocalypse, uh, which ha- has kind of a hilarious album cover. Um, where do I feel, where do I stand on this one? This was during the, the beginning of the streaming age. I'll put this in the A tier. This was in the, during the uh, streaming age where he was starting to release songs that... Uh, he would, he would release them way before the actual album would come out so he could get them out in a more timely and relevant manner instead of having to wait for an entire album to come out he could just drop out songs as they became relevant which made sense so i remember hearing the song whatever you like which was a parody of the same song called whatever you like by ti i heard that like years before the actual album came out i feel like the funny thing about the whatever you like parody is that in the TI version, he's like, you can have whatever you like, as in I'm so rich, you can have, you know, whatever you want. Weird Al's take is you can have whatever you like from the perspective of a poor person. So, you know, all the free napkins and ketchup packets, you know, from the fast food store. You can have uh, all my you know, like government cheese. You know, we can go visit your cousin as long as you spare some change for gas or whatever. Um, so it was funny for that reason. There's some weak ones on here. CNR is like supposed to be a pastiche of, uh, White Stripes. I just, I don't know, even know who he's talking about in this song. TMZ is all right. Skipper Dan's okay. Um, Craigslist is a pretty funny song. Stylistic, uh, parody of The Doors. Party in the CIA. Yeah. I, I didn't think it was that clever. Uh, Ringtone, he's really doing, like, it's a pastiche of Queen, but he's doing a song about how nobody likes his ringtone. It's so ridiculous that it's just almost like a guilty pleasure for me. And, um, yeah, anyway, I, I've got to, uh, oh, stop forwarding that crap to me. Uh, that's a fantastic song. Anyway, uh, got to keep moving along here. All right, we are up to his last studio album, Mandatory Fun, which I think is a hilarious title. Um, This was kind of a bigger one for him. Uh, I I definitely liked this one a lot more than Alpocalypse. Uh, Now you see him covering the likes of Iggy Azalea, uh, Imagine Dragons, Pharrell Williams. I thought Word Crimes was the best song off of this uh, album. It's uh, it's a parody of the uh, Pharrell Williams and Robin Thicke song, uh, Blurred Lines. And uh, I just loved the music video and basically how he's just breaking down like common misconceptions or common mistakes people make with their grammar. Again, it's uh, such an absurdly like should be lame on paper, but it, it's it's so hilarious. Um, there's a lot of uh, good, pretty good songs on this album. Then some ones that uh, I don't that kind of go over my head. I still don't quite understand the Jackson Park Express song at the end of the album. Um, yeah so anyway we're gonna go ahead and put this one in i'll put this one in the a tier as well and then there's some other stuff like he did the the hamilton polka and peter and the wolf and i'm not going to get into all his non-studio album stuff so yeah looks like that's my list i'm pretty happy with that um I like the S tier, I like the A tier, B tier looks right, and the C tier looks right. So yeah, 
I really hope Weird Al has another album in him. I feel like he's retired at this point. Um, I feel like the world really needs Weird Al right now to, like, make fun of some shit. But, I mean, with everything being so, like, hip-hop oriented and Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo oriented, I don't know how he could pull it off, but I'm sure he could. Uh, So, anyway, let me know in the comments uh, how you feel about this list. If you're a Weird Al fan, I'm sorry this video was so freaking long. Um, anyway, uh, give me some suggestions of an artist you would like me to rank for future videos. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, enjoy the rest of your night.